Hello, and welcome to the Smart Injury Doctors Podcast, the injury market's top program for doctors, lawyers, and insurers who want to gain greater insight on how to improve patient recovery results and deliver better services in the U.S. injury market. Please welcome your host, Dr. Jeffrey Allen Kronk. Okay, doctors, today what I want to talk about is why should anybody do spinal ligament testing? Well, there's two types of spinal ligament injury testing. There's, there's the te- If you think the disc is involved, then basically you're going to order for an MRI. If you think that the discs or the ligaments around the disc, which remember there's 220 specialized ligaments in the human spine, 23 of which are discs. So if you think the other ligaments are damaged, you're going to do an excessive motion test. So, well, you know, the reason is why would I do an excessive motion test and why would I do it in an unbiased, independent manner? Well, you do it in an unbiased, independent manner, so the results are uh, deemed to be more unbiased. But the reason why you do the testing itself is to determine the ser- severity and location of any non-disc ligament damage. You're also going to do it to determine the severity and grade of any ligament sprain, grade one, grade two, grade three. You're going to do it to determine key factors that will assist in the development of an accurate and personalized treatment plan. You're going to do it to improve patient recovery results because the more specific you are to the injury in your application of your therapeutics, the better the results are going to be for the patient. You're going to improve patient compliance with this um, by giving the patient the understanding of what they have, then they have a better understanding of what they need to do and they will be more compliant um, with their treatment program. And it's always, in my experience, it has always been good to educate the patient on the significance of these injuries. Spinal ligament injuries themselves are the number one cause of chronic pain and disability. There's probably no area in the body, human body that is more problematic than the spine. These are the most expensive injuries. These are the most problematic injuries in the market today. So anything that you can do to educate your patient on understanding this condition and you obviously have to arrive at an understanding of their condition through testing but anything you can do to improve their understanding of the condition is going to help the patient but for you the provider it also helps improve your compliance with known professional best practices or guidelines And these professional guidelines, such as, say, the ICA best practice guidelines, um, the AMA guidelines for permanent impairment, Uh, you could use the uh, x-ray guidelines for, you know, rationale for why you're doing imaging. So it helps you to be in compliance with your known professional best practice guidelines. And that's important because that allows you to have less documentation issues, less reimbursement issues, less you know IME utilization cutoffs, and everything that comes with it. So it also allows you to use best your your known frequency and duration of treatment guidelines. It allows you to understand and be able to communicate the benefits of long term spinal care to your patients. It improves your documentation again for better reimbursement. It, it allows the patient access to any benefits that they may be entitled to or more benefits um, in this case because the more injury you show, the more benefits there would be. So, which makes a lot of sense. I mean, basically, if I scratched my arm or if I cut my arm off, there's, there's different benefits that the person's going to need. If I scratched my arm, it's going to heal very quickly. If they cut off my arm and I'm right-handed, there's a lot of things that I might need access to. I might need access to, to job retraining. I might need access to you know, lifelong uh, care, help, um, prosthetics, things like that. They're all associated with the injury. So, um, you know, ligament testing also improves your insurer relationships and insurer communications. It it reduces your potential for insurance overutilization audits, which is, you know, that can be a problem for those that are going through audits. Most of the time in the audits, you're basically being looked at or charged with or clawback ideas are on you overutilized. You didn't support the level of care that you delivered. Um, So it can improve your ability to determine if additional diagnostic 
uh, procedures are needed for the patient. It can improve your ability to report known spinal impairments. It can improve your ability to support referral relationships with other medical specialties. It can improve your ability to determine when surgical or interventional pain referrals may be warranted. There are conditions where there's enough ligament damage that it may generate the need to do a neurologic or a surgical consult, or it may need to have other things other than what conservative care itself that may be deli delivered in your clinic can uh, provide. But it's, it's all the same idea. All you're doing is you're knowing how badly damaged the patient is. Um, it can improve your you know, uh, uh, ability to utilize proper return to play parameters in contact sports. In contact sports, there are parameters that say if, if an athlete is injured to this level in the spine, there's this much ligament damage in the spine, then it's contraindicated to put them back into contact sports right away until that um, has healed. It improves your ability to contest the sometimes patently defective IME or utilization reviews that many providers experience. And it reduces the, the stress associated with deposition and trial appearances. So this, this ligament testing uh, provides you with a lot of benefit. Once you understand the benefits of, of, of doing this type of testing, you would never be without it. Once I understood it in my own private practice. I was never without it. So how did I how did I discover it? I was in private practice. I was doing uh, my chiropractic clinic, and I was doing care. And with injury patients, I didn't know I, there was no way to determine really how badly damaged the person was. Right. So I couldn't tell that through my examination procedures, through my orthopedic testing, or anything else. And so I was a bit shaky early on in my imaging and how imaging did that. Once I realized that excessive motion testing completely gave me the ability to determine how badly damaged the patient was, which seriously improved my ability to get results, which seriously improved my ability to uh, communicate with the patient what they had, seriously improved my ability to get compliance, ser seriously improved my ability to get paid, seriously improved my insurer relationships, my attorney relationships, my medical doctor relationships. It improved everything. Once I understood that. So I met a guy named Harold McCoy at a company called Spinologic Diagnostics. And once I understood it, there was not a case of an injured patient that came into my clinic that did not get a excessive motion test because I knew I couldn't determine the severity and location of ligament damage without it. And I knew it was a hell of a lot better to understand how badly damaged the patient was right away than it was in waiting. So for me, um, that was something that... Uh, from that day on, then I started reading things like the AMA impairment guides, and I realized, wow, the AMA impairment guides actually validates the condition that I work on probably better um, than the, my profession does itself. So it was like, wow, this, you know, I had this epiphany moment, and it was a great epiphany moment. So it did everything for me, it did so much for me that I pretty much um, decided to uh, make an impact on standardizing the workups, spinal injury workups for this procedure. There are only three injuries that a spine can have. Um, you can fracture it or you can have two ligament uh, injuries. If you have damage to the disc, it's a disc herniation. If you have damage to the supportive ligaments that are around the disc and in other areas where there aren't a disc, which, you know, cranial cervical junction, um, then damage to those ligaments shows up as excessive motion. And if you have a disc herniation and don't know what the supporting ligaments are doing around it, to me, you have a very incomplete picture of your spinal injury. If, if that's all you have is an MRI and you have disc herniations, you have a very incomplete picture of the patient's injury. So spinal ligament testing or excessive motion testing does provides a tremendous amount of benefit to the providers that understand how to, util, how to utilize it. And that's what it did for me. So... What I do on these, these podcasts is just take a topic, do a short uh, talk on it. Hopefully you gain something from it. Put your questions down below. Um, or if you have questions or you have comments and you want to speak directly to us, call us at 800-940-6513. Tell us what you'd like to hear about or put your comments down below. Tell me what, you know, what, what are the main things that you um, have a problem with in the injury market. 
The other thing is we have a free Facebook user group. If you contact us again at 800-940-6513, we can certainly enroll you in that group. It's free, and all we do is provide continuous educational material in this particular area of private practice. So, doctors, I thank you very much for taking the time to listen to this podcast, and I look forward to seeing you or hearing about you or having you listen to the very next podcast. Thank you. You've been listening to the Smart Injury Doctors Podcast, the number one audio production show for professionals in the U.S. injury market that want to deliver better injury services to the patients, clients, or insureds they serve. If you like what you heard today, please leave us a review and don't forget to join us on our next program.